Namaste to all of you and welcome to the Bhavan London. As you all know, the Bhavan London is now celebrating its 50th year, 50 grand years of being here in London and serving Indian classical arts. We had our inaugural performance, a Bharatnatyam performance by Rukmini Vijay Kumar and I am absolutely delighted to have her with me today for our Bhavan's conversation series. Rukmini, welcome and I'm so happy to have you here today. Happy to be here as well. <laughs> To start with, we just had your performance of Talatu for our inauguration. Absolutely amazing performance. And I loved how you bring these classical subjects, but the way you present it is very new. So could you talk to us about your approach to Bharatnatyam, which is a very classical form, and what's your perspective about it when you design performances? Um, I think that, that's a very big question. <laughs> True. <laughs> but I think, first of all, for me, um, with Bharatnatyam, I think my intention has always been to learn more mm -hmm. and to study it to the best, mm -hmm. best of my abilities. Um, I started out with uh, Guru Padmini Rao and I think I had a very uh, different movement tradition which mm -hmm. I learned with her, which was, um, I presume Tanjavur, but I'm also informed that it's a little bit Pandanalu, but it was Kitapapile's mm -hmm. style. Yeah. Um, after that, I went to Narmada Aunty. Mm. Uh, Narmada Aunty, I think, also had the similar lineage, but also Pandanalu. Okay. But I, I was learning with Sundari Akka from when I was, I think, I would say 11, mm. uh, 10 or 11, some, sometime then. Okay. So I was studying Natya Shastra and mm. Karanas with her. And I also got that Varavur Bani a little bit right. because mm. Yes, the Karanas were there, but after a while I spent just learning Bharatanatyam with Sundariyaka also. Okay. Um, and that was Padavaka's tradition where mm -hmm. she calls it Bharatanrityam and not Bharatanatyam. But I also had this very, uh, a little more linear form than mm -hmm. uh, what Bharatanrityam is. It's, yeah. And as a youngster, I attended a lot of workshops, you know, because mm -hmm. in Bangalore, and workshops were a little more intense then, you know, and there was CVC Mama, Savitri Jagannath mm -hmm. Rao. Uh, there were so many teachers who came, uh, Priyaka came for workshop. Yeah. So there were um, so many other perspectives that fed me at a very young age. Like between the ages, I want to say of 12 and 17 mm -hmm. or 18, which were my formative years. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, I really liked all Okay. So it's not like I can say this was my style and I reject everything else. Hmm. So there were some things from the Kalakshetra style which were like this, this they had right, yeah. worked very nicely for me. Mm. We used to do this. Mm. Um, but I thought both were nice. I also yeah. like this and I, I like this. Yeah. So uh, then when you when I when I began and I lost my teachers very young as well. Okay. So by the time I think I was twenty three, both. Um, Sundari Akka and Naru, Naru Aunty had, they both right. passed away. So I was left with maneuvering all this information on my own. Mm -hmm. Also because I didn't know who would accept me the way I was, the way Narmada Aunty did. Right. So Narmada yeah. Aunty embraced me mm -hmm. for all. So by that time I was learning mainly with Naru Aunty. Mm -hmm. And I would go to Sundari Akka um, mainly for Karanas. Okay. So I had completely shifted to under mm -hmm. her guidance. But Narmada Aunty was unique in the sense that she would be okay if I said I want to add Karanas. Right. Um, she would celebrate my, you know, when I came back with the ballet combination, she would mm -hmm. be like, show me that, show me this. Right. Yeah. Well, the year I came back, uh, the first year after college, because after college, when I started dance school, I studied dance school in the US, mm -hmm. and um, I was mainly doing ballet and modern there. Right. So when I came back, in the summers I would show her like things I'd learned mm. and she'd make me perform it for her and you right. know so yeah. she it was very different so yeah. the summers I I literally lived in her house I wouldn't leave she okay. wanted to kick me out I'd be like it's okay can't you eat lunch I'll wait yeah. here for you so yeah. it was um, so she she was okay with my dance and mm. she was okay with me maybe my body language was slightly different because of the so, learning I had yeah. um, but I didn't know who else at that time, mm. when I was uh, 22, 23, would mm. accept me in the way With that all she that did. variety that you had, you know? yeah. So, um, so I, I mean, 
eventually like I think there was a lot firstly for me I, I tried I, I had a deep interest in trying to align myself right. uh, because I had some injuries when I was 14 15 I remember vividly sitting outside a workshop a two-week workshop because my knees were paining oh, uh, right. maybe I was 13 I think but I was so depressed and I was mm. so sad I had to sit and do Natuangam or mm. yes I learned some Natuangam but mm. I really no. didn't want to. <laughs> Not for a dancer, no. I was so sad, you know, like I remember that feeling of utter depression and you know, like feeling like heartbroken. Yeah. So I think I, I, my search to figure out why this is happening, what I need to do began very young. And I remember writing and going to different classes and checking what exercises do they do. Mm. I think maybe I was 16, 17. Mm -hmm. And Bangalore, the teachers are very sweet and very, Absolutely. you know, welcoming. Yeah. So I remember I went to Kiran sir's class. Mm -hmm. I went to, I think, Shubhad and Jain, mm -hmm. Praveen mm -hmm. A few, four or five other classes, Banwanti's right. class maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly, but I have a big paper where I've written, they right. do this warm-up, <laughs> they do this, they do this. Yeah. Because I was trying to find how to fix all these things in my body. Mm -hmm. But when I started yoga, I started, you know, learning about alignment. And then when I went to school, obviously we, we had some anatomy, then I studied more anatomy and physiology. And suddenly there were so many things opening up in my body because mm -hmm. of Alexander technique and Pilates mm -hmm. and the pedagogical system of, um, we had to learn ballet and modern pedagogy mm -hmm. and basically how they are structured right. in school so that we can basically be teachers in school after. So, so the way how that pedagogical system was structured, and then, um, then I went to study anatomy and physiology in uh, Boston University right. in exercise. So I think a lot of these things influence the way I see my body and alignment. Mm. Right. And in the last four or five years, I've started calling my method the Radha Kalpa method because mm -hmm. it's a system of learning. Mm -hmm. Um, that yes, it has all my teachers in it, but it's not exactly what they they said as mm -hmm. well. A lot of it is things that I've discovered in my body on my own. Right. And um, I primarily go from a place of neutrality, mm -hmm. so that accents and dynamic accents come within the context of a choreographic choice. Right. Um, so. I don't say this is my style and that is not my style. Mm. I I say everything is yes. my, everything is my, <laughs> my style. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. So the Radha Kalpa method is not a bani. Mm -hmm. It is a system of education, mm -hmm. and it um, it informs my body mm -hmm. such that it can be possibly the most versatile dancer right. as as That's as you can be. You know, obviously, even within that, there are limitations. Mm -hmm. But as, you know, as much as possible, yeah. you know, so I try to devise and train my body so that I can assimilate from all the, mm. all the gurus, all the teachers mm. to my maximum capacity, yeah, you know. Take the kind of best of it or Yeah, because in Padua class, she wants me to be a certain way. Mm. She wants that weight, the, the looseness. Yeah. At the same time, in another class, they want... You know, I've seen yeah. like that, that sharpness mm. and there is a beauty to both. I am really? not going yeah. to say, I like this, I don't like that. Mm. So it, it's not, it is, yeah. in my mind, it's not true, mm. you know. So I, but I want to be able to do both. Mm. There is one form that I've chosen mm. and it's Bharatanatyam. So let yeah. me encompass that. So right. in terms of that, this is my, this is my overall approach to the form. Mm. So it's not about... Don't know like I guess I I don't know if that was your question but I explained it why it was yeah yes. why I yeah. I move the way I do and mm -hmm. it's not it doesn't come from a place of trying to be different mm -hmm. or new mm -hmm. uh, my teachers passed away and I was trying to figure out what to do right so this is how I figured it out right it was a complete path of self discovery and yeah. yeah it's just and I many times they say oh you are dancing differently and mm -hmm. in my mind. I don't know what is different yeah. because this is mm. this is how I dance. This yeah. is how I know to mm -hmm. dance. I don't know any other way. Right. So if I look, I have to look from an external eye and observe mm -hmm. and say, oh, I'm dancing this. Oh, they're dancing. Oh, 
is it, oh this is slightly different oh i see it's a little bit different but in my mind i'm just like i think it's the same yeah. uh so it's um yeah so it's more about i think how the form is manifested in me mm. as opposed to how my mind decided to do something different that's not mm. that's not what it was yeah. amazing so if anybody who's training in the radha kalpa method you would i'm assuming you would definitely give them also the freedom to say you know okay this probably doesn't suit my body or something and you mm. know and i think that's very important for any year it's not about whether it suits their body or not it's to make their body most pliable right okay you know right yeah. so if they have like a tightness issue mm-hmm. if they have thing they are not enough i'll work with all of that to make sure that it uh, it gives all opportunities right. so if they always have this up accent i'll mm-hmm. remove the accent mm-hmm. and make sure they have an even accent mm-hmm. and they can also do an up mm-hmm. and a down accent or they can do an up accent that goes like this so they nice yeah they're able to not just move by default mm-hmm. so every movement becomes a conscious choice right, right. accent direction yeah. all of it mm-hmm. you know it's not about suiting yeah. the body mm-hmm. obviously there are physical limitations that come with the age i'm not That's talking totally about that different. yeah it's yeah. completely different yeah. yeah awesome and how do you perceive or uh, approach bharatnatyam in the creative sense because do you veer away from like the mythological stories and stuff do you do contemporary themes i don't know if you can actually define what contemporary themes are that's yeah. another whole debate on its own <laughs> yeah. how do you approach the content that you put out or your career mm, i do a lot of traditional themes mm-hmm. um not because it's what is tradition mm-hmm. but because it connects to me right um like with talato it was about yashoda and radha mm. and the story moved me mm. the character moved me and so i made it mm. so it's not about uh, for me it's not about sticking to tradition or not sticking to tradition mm. it's about what connects to me so like every are the whole ramayana may be there and mm. i might like to read it mm. but there may be a particular incident a particular thing that I feel like oh I I see that. Mm-hmm. And when I see it and it moves me emotionally then I then I'm able to take it. If it doesn't mm-hmm. maybe that's not the right time. I won't say it's not right forever mm-hmm. because there are many subjects that I would not have done at a particular time that work later. Mm-hmm. So yes I do a lot of traditional themes mm-hmm. and um um you know Shiva and Parvati mm-hmm. and thing because I've grown up in that environment and I it makes sense yeah, for me. It becomes kind of second nature for Yeah, it makes them. sense. Yeah. And yeah. for me the imagination works. Mm. I can see Shiva, I can see Krishna. Mm. I can imagine Parvati and her smile and her beauty yeah. and I see Saraswati. So the images are like just um they're part of my psyche. So it really I can do it with a uh, conviction. Right. The second thing is yes, I do do contemporary uh mm. work as well mm, especially in the last i want to say 4 5 years okay so i did one uh, based it was called turiya okay and based on uh, dreams and dreaming oh wow an nice. ensemble work right it was so very weird <laughs> um and i used bharatnatyam mm-hmm. and um, it was a trio so there were three dancers i made another one called uh, time okay uh, or yama Mm-hmm. I think I called it Yama. Mm-hmm. Uh so it had the story of Savitri interwoven mm-hmm. but at the same time it wasn't just that story. Right. Uh, it was about the ticking clock mm. like they like and people going chuk chuk like mm-hmm. uh getting to work on time mm-hmm. doing things mm-hmm. the busyness of time how time doesn't stay right. um things coming there are some um what do you what do you see even my contemporary work because i live in an indian environment there are indian um motivations as right, well absolutely yeah but it also refers to the modern world that mm-hmm. we live in so that was one i did i did another one called mala mm-hmm. uh which had one based on the isolations that we have in our mm-hmm. in our bharatnatyam like right. our head yeah shoulders this mm-hmm. and how when you connect some of it does it become momentum does it move So it was a physical study okay. more than anything else. Mm-hmm. 
And the second half I had a piece that was based on Krishna and mm. Radha. Okay. But it was if they were in love today. Okay. So they were okay. so the the gestures changed slightly, mm -hmm. the way it was rendered was different. Mm -hmm. Um it wasn't like a normal Abhinaya piece. Right. It was very slow and mm -hmm. I just moved from one end of the stage to the other end for like 20 minutes. Okay. So it was a very, um, it was contemporary, but it had the Indian mythological element. It had that element, yeah. but it, it need not have had it either. You know what I mean? I so it was, it was somewhere in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the middle, but I wasn't wearing a sari, I was wearing a dress. Okay. So there also, right. the music was a piano. Okay. So it, it kind of fell in between. Mm -hmm. Then I made another one called Unrequited, which okay. was on Shiva and Parvati, but that was completely contemporary because of the way I treated the content. Okay. So one half was Bharatanatyam with another with Avarnam, mm -hmm. and the other half was um, I say it's contemporary because of how I address the subject mm -hmm. physically, mm -hmm. uh, musically, uh, with intention, with body, all of it. You know. Um, then I made another one which I just stage which called abducted which is about abuse okay uh, which was hard for me to make but uh, so it does have an Indian element with respect to my culture where, where the archetype of a strong woman is in my culture which mm -hmm. is Kali yeah and when do we release Kali mm -hmm. at which point how far is too far mm -hmm. when do we stop right. you know so there were a lot of questions and like at the same time it was about incidents that I've heard personal stories from people, people right. of how they've been abused. Mm -hmm. So when I was sitting with a group of my dancers, or a group of girls, a group of women in other situations, mm -hmm. and I've had this talk, like almost everyone has been abused at some point, well, in some way, you know? And it's very hard hitting, and it's something that I've, um, that's disturbed me for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, with that uh, subject. So it was difficult for me to actually voice it. I didn't know how to do it, but I finally mm -hmm. performed it this year. So there's a lot of contemporary work that I do, right. but there's also a lot of traditional work that I do mm -hmm. at the same time. So I have Tal after I have something, and one, mm -hmm. every three months I have something new. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's amazing. And you also do a lot of content on Instagram. I keep watching all your videos. Is that something that you do specifically for film? Or is that something that you already have choreographed and you present it as a film? Like, how does that? So, with the Instagram content, or since the YouTube COVID work. happened, yeah, since the COVID happened, I'll tell you how it started, mm -hmm. and then we can. Okay. Before that, the Instagram, basically, mostly for the Instagram content, mm -hmm. this is what I would do. If mm -hmm. I'm dressed up, mm -hmm. like say I'm wearing, if I had come here today in a sari, mm -hmm. and I had time after, and you had time after, I say Anvi. Can you hold it yeah. and take a video for five yeah. seconds? I'll mm -hmm. scroll, I'll find a song that I like, mm -hmm. and then I'll dance to it. Because Amazing. there's so many dance <laughs> songs that I like that I haven't had a chance to dance yeah. to. Yeah. So I'll be like, we'll find a nice corner, and mm -hmm. I just just do it. There. I yeah. just dance. So it's yeah. really not like a proper career. Uh, something that's about. like a big thought, and yeah. I planned, and I said I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna dress up. Like mm -hmm. no. So if I'm dressed and I'm mm -hmm. going somewhere. And I have that five minutes. It literally takes right. five minutes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have no problem dancing anywhere for five minutes. So yeah. it's really not, it's a no-brainer <laughs> for me. Okay. Right. The other type of content that's on Instagram ever since lockdown are things where people ask me to do these live streaming shows. Okay. Yeah. We just had a lot and of... And a yeah. lot of things mm -hmm. were there. And uh, I was like, I can't do these lives. I tried one or two and I, I really didn't like how content see creatively when I create for the stage mm. there are certain things that I I see with respect to the audience right so my body movement the way I move from one part of the stage to another mm. the direction I face if I these things have an impact right in film I cannot you can I'm, you're moving from one stage and you're just on a screen mm. right you're like and you you're not even on this screen you're on like this tiny screen so people are watching on this screen and you're moving left to right. How is it even going to have an impact? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it yeah. really, yeah. It, 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 the impact is, mm. it's changed completely, yeah. you know. So there are things that, 
on stage like left to right when I move or when I go in a circle I've moved from from India to a magical kingdom mm. I can't show that I'm going in a circle and I'm just there yeah. on the screen <laughs> you know so how yeah. <laughs> on film it's completely different Absolutely. you know so mm. I cannot ignore that this is a mm. different artistic medium and it needs to be addressed differently mm. so when they started asking me for these programs I said no problem I'm going to videotape it and I'll send it to you Okay. there's no need for me to say I am dancing it live, it doesn't do anything for the art, yeah. like it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, I started just doing just normal items, Adharam, Madhuram, mm -hmm. I had to call all the musicians one by one, ma'am can I use your song, sir can I use your song, <laughs> sir you have a song on YouTube, can I please dance to it, yeah. can, you know, so right. one by one, I, it was so nice, I connected with so many so people, many. Yeah. Yeah, so nice. So after I, I did I made I started dancing to all the songs that I like to dance to that mm. possibly I never got a chance to perform on stage right. like so yeah. Adharam Madhuram mm. Lalita Lavanga uh -huh. Kali Nartana Tilana right. then uh, Adharam Madhuram other version <laughs> <laughs> then <laughs> Madhava Mama so mm. many so many songs Krishna Ni Begane Baro mm -hmm. Tervil Varan and every <laughs> other song I'll be like I can dance to this I can dance to that and I have some favorite Musicians, I keep listening to them and I'm like, I can dance to that as well. <laughs> and that's amazing. And this is beautiful and this is so nice. Yeah. So each time, if I'm listening to music, I'm always dancing in my head. Right. So basically, I just dance mm -hmm. in person. Okay. I took the video mm -hmm. and then I gave it to these online performances. Right. Because mm -hmm. I was like, this they is a be better way. Mm -hmm. um, and once it was there, I had so many videos because so each program was 60 minutes, one was yeah. 70 minutes. Yeah. One was 18 minutes, so I had a lot of videos. So I'm like, anyway, these are all permission taken. Then I, ma'am, can I upload on YouTube? Can I upload? <laughs> Is it okay? This thing. Right. So then I started uploading uh -huh. it. So I had all this. Then when reels mm -hmm. started, I was like, I think I can take snippets from this and just put it as reels. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was more that mm -hmm. as opposed to me making it. Making specifically. No, I right. haven't made like mm -hmm. since that. Then I also had some commissions. Okay. Which were artistic commissions like there was a I did one for yoga yoga and yoga I remember that video yes. then I did one for namami yoga with you right. then I did one on thing but those were properly filmed right uh, I had to plan and mm -hmm. get the camera and lights mm -hmm. and one for teamworks which was called Malari okay uh, that was a collaborative thing with the was it with know, the two percussionists and yes. you dance in different spaces of Correct. Color, right yeah. yes so yeah. that was also planned so there were four or five films that were commissioned and I did okay a few were for an online program, okay. one or two were for a contemporary festival and a few were just because I was inspired and I called my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> amazing. So it was more, yeah. it was more like, uh, like time, I made one called Time okay. and I made one called Unspoken mm -hmm. after my dad passed away and, um, and the other one was Expectation. Okay. So those three Incidentally, was the all the contemporary work as well, and um, I just I had an idea, and I was like, uh, we were on the beach. I was like, you, I have a sari. Can I dance? <laughs> He's like, okay, fine. Right. So we made it. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so and you've also traveled quite a lot, yeah. right? Almost all over the world, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. How would you say Bharatnatyam? is perceived differently or is practiced differently in India as compared to say UK or USA or I think it is very different mm -hmm. because in India the population the audience like coming from an audience perspective right. right so from an audience perspective in India I think the large portion of the audience mm -hmm. really loves traditional work right they like watching mm -hmm. uh, they also like seeing you dressed in jewelry mm -hmm. Um, they like if you wear a headset, they like, they like the entire whole picture. They like the whole thing and especially even in India depending on the venue mm -hmm. and the audience that that venue is bringing. They enjoy and they connect to the traditional work not only because of the tradition but they also because they have a connect with the subject. Absolutely. Yeah. You know so they connect to the idea of Rama, they know what a Pattavishekam is, they know Oh, Deepavali, if you're, 
if you are doing Rama coming, mm -hmm. the aunties will cry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So See. there is a certain emotional connect to the subject. So there are different types of audiences even within India. Okay. You know, so if you go to a, an auditorium or you dance in NGME, the audience is slightly different. So they're more assimilating mm -hmm. to contemporary work. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do abducted in a temple performance. Absolutely. <laughs> they're not, they're not going to, yeah. uh, they may understand that they may love it, yeah. but it might be too disturbing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I'm not sure it might work, mm -hmm. but maybe that's my own bias. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel personally, as an artist, you feel as, I, as an artist, yeah. I feel like that. Yeah. Until I try, I won't know, but I feel like that, right. you know. Right. Then there's, um, there is, a, like, I will definitely do more if I'm in a suburb audience mm -hmm. where I know there are going to be more uh, connoisseurs or mm -hmm. who, people who have watched classical dance a lot. Very interesting. I'll be more likely to do a slow varnam, yeah. a quiet ashtapadi. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to recognize that they will wait and they will watch. Yeah. But a slow varnam and a quiet ashtapadi to a temple audience, not necessarily, you know, because they're all there short, there'll be a lot of children running around. Mm -hmm. So it, it so may not necessarily work, yeah. you know. It it might be fine, no matter how well you are, mm -hmm. there is also an audience preference that exists. And even in the Nati Shastra, they've spoken about this. Yeah. Different regions, yeah. liking different, having yeah. different tastes, you yeah. know. So definitely the way the audience perceives mm -hmm. dance in Europe is very different from India mm -hmm. and I think very different from the US mm -hmm. and Malaysia it's different so it, I think it's always important for an artist to check the waters mm -hmm. it's not to change what you are as an artist or what you know mm -hmm. but because nobody will change completely. Absolutely. Nobody yeah. should either because everyone should stand their stead mm -hmm. and hold it strong. But I also feel that it's important to accept or acknowledge that mm -hmm. there are different preferences in different mm -hmm. areas. And yeah. yeah, it's true that they are. Yeah. But if somebody likes a sweet dish, you can't uh, give them a savory and say, go enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so Because Europe is fairly minimalist. Mm -hmm. So if I wear less jewelry and a plain sari, they're not going to bother as much. If I wear it and I don't wear earrings and I dance in yeah. India, it's half the aunties will be like, hey, ka kono no uh, Why there's <laughs> nothing in here? <laughs> yeah, what happened? Why yeah. there's no bangle? Why? why? Yeah. Mundukai, mundukai. Yeah. Like, it bothers them. Yeah. Here, they won't care. Actually, it might bother them less because I have less jewelry. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's simple things like that, I think. Yeah. Whatever, do... If I can make small modifications that will help that particular audience mm -hmm. uh, find affinity to what I'm trying to communicate, mm -hmm. I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any difference in how it is practiced by the dancers? Like how the art form itself is like kind of taken forward by today's dancers? I think it's a. I think rather than a regional, I think it's generational difference. Mm -hmm. So the, the way the previous generation taught versus the next generation teaching. Right. I think that is slightly different. Mm. And I think also in terms of art organizations and culturally mm. and all that, in India, there's a lot more opportunity to present mm. traditional work. Yeah. So if I make a contemporary work, I don't know so many places to present mm. it. Here in the West, there's a, as, as my limited perception can see, or as I see, there is a lot more opportunity to present Bharatanatyam if it is moved to a contemporary mm. kind of mindset, right. not within the traditional oh, framework. Yeah. Um, in the traditional framework, there is less opportunity. Mm -hmm. So in that way, yes, mm -hmm. I think there are changes. Mm -hmm. And because of the demands, the artists change. Right. So, but I think the learning tradition remains fairly the mm -hmm. same anywhere I go I mm -hmm. see teachers kind of trying to retain that same yeah. mindset mm -hmm. and which is a nice thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah awesome and uh, if there is one advice you would give to the younger dancers because I know in today's generation we have social media you have to do a lot of networking 
so you can't just say just practice your art form and everything will come to you <laughs> yeah so apart from that practicing and that dedication and devotion what else would you advise a young dancer who's obviously the practice and studio mm. time your dedication is on top mm. like like i would say 20 steps above any everything else, else. Right. okay but you also need to be open minded talk to people mm. meet people don't don't think my opinions best opinion mm. you know yeah. because everybody is an artist and everybody is a is a good artist you know so so many people who may have different opinions from you mm. may practice their art form in a different way Absolutely. but it's not a wrong way mm. right and it's important to acknowledge and respect that difference mm. and also see what you can learn from it so be open minded right um and be willing to consider other things especially when you're coming up the um, the other thing is that learn everything that you can mm-hmm. learn to do your own makeup because we don't have like big funding as classical dancers one makeup artist one hair stylist one thing. the only time you'll enjoy all that is on your arangetram day yeah <laughs> after sure. that yeah. you have to do everything on your own literally a one man show yeah it is it yeah. is truly <clears throat> so you have to learn to write your resume create your own invoices make your you know like do your makeup learn about lighting you know, how does lighting work and all this you learn from being there and helping and from experience mm. so yes you can take short courses but being there and helping people makes you learn even more mm. so if there's small things like doing makeup for the little kids in your class mm. or combing their hair mm. do all that because yeah. it'll make you mm. better learn about designing like so you can make your own posters and now there's so many apps where you can yeah. do it so that um, and like the business of dance is obviously important because you need to kind of um, know how to present yourself mm. also present yourself but presenting yourself can't take press, like priority over your practice mm. because that happens sometimes yeah like making reels for instagram becomes more important than practicing your adavas mm. so if you have only one hour in the day practice your adavas don't make the reel right <laughs> right yeah <laughs> right say yeah. if you finish your adava practice and mm. then you have another 5 minutes Mm. to spend okay make your reel no problem mm. but don't waste all your time mm. on this and forget about your what exactly you're doing that for <laughs> yeah the main yeah. thing you know so yeah. i'm ne- i'm not one to say social media is a waste or it's not necessary mm. it is but let it reflect your practice and your art your life yeah. don't make it take over your art and your life so yeah. if there's something you're doing and you want to share it they like take a few minutes and share yeah. but it need not be like everything you do is for that oh yeah there has to be a healthy boundary because that becomes overwhelming it's debilitating and yeah. it's it will take away from your art so let's say you're working out five times a week once you have some space you put your camera record and put it mm. fine no problem mm. every time you work out you take five different shots yeah. you put that you do this okay put it here again you do mm-hmm. put it there again you do it will take over everything mm-hmm. like it will just swallow you whole mm-hmm. so be be wise know yeah. what you're doing it for it is a great way to reach out to people mm-hmm. it's a great way where you don't have a media like a magazine a newspaper nothing is between mm-hmm. you and your audience they see you directly mm. but this is also snippets of your performance it's very different from dancing like a, on a reel yeah. and dancing yeah. for 2 hours on stage yeah. <laughs> it's, oh yeah there's no there's no comparison, comparison yeah. you know so most of the things that i do on stage never make it to a reel yeah <laughs> that's the truth it is yeah. the truth you know yeah. because the content the, the mm. way done, in some ways i say there's hardly any connection very right. rarely there'll be something that i actually mm-hmm. danced on stage is mm-hmm. on the reel right but nobody watches it <laughs> right because the presentation is different, different the way yeah. you do it and yeah. that's completely okay it's okay yeah so 
have a healthy background so you mm. do need to have the social media and all of that mm. i think it's nice because you can reach people mm. and um, more than anything when you're a young dancer i say that you should always remember who has taught you mm. credit the artists credit your teachers credit your musicians mm. because as an as an artist you will realize later when you do it full time is that that's the only thing you have that's what matters as the only thing that people have and you they feel valued when you when you say thank you to my singer mm-hmm. thank you to my mridang kids mm-hmm. thank you for the person who composed this chatti for me so it makes such a big difference because you you acknowledge their contribution in what you what you've yeah. done so always learn to respect the art wherever you've gotten it wherever it's from and that's it practice 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 yeah and yeah. don't fall into the rabbit hole <laughs> yes yeah, social media can become a rabbit yeah. hole if you allow it to yeah. otherwise it can be a great asset absolutely yeah yeah to end with rukmini you've also written a book recently which we had a little interview about after the performance uh, if you're interested we will be putting up snippets of that as well on our youtube channel so do look out for that so would you tell our audience a bit about how that happened and what it is about So there are two books. Mm-hmm. One is Finding Shiva, which is um, the I call it the inner journey of the performative mm-hmm. experience, and the other one is Discovering Devi, Devi, which is a coffee table book, which is available only in India. Right. The other one is available on Amazon everywhere okay. in the world. So the um, it started off because I saw a book. I don't know 15 years ago mm-hmm. that was a kind of a coffee table books about a western dancer who came and experienced mm-hmm. indian dance in tanjavur mm-hmm. and all that and there were some beautiful pictures and all that but the writing was from a very outside perspective right. you know so and in my mind I was like it's it's beautiful but it it sees us differently yeah, yeah. you know it's not it's not that it's wrong Mm-hmm. It, it just it sees dance differently it's more like a superficial if that's uh, correct to say maybe mm-hmm. you know so i said uh, i want to have a book that's from our perspective right from how we yeah from how we see it how we experience dance and art and how the uh, spirituality and dance and art is interwoven in the culture completely it's like this you yeah. know like you can't even see Yeah. like separate when you move fast it's just one so <laughs> yeah. so i uh, started off like that i dance in the natyanjali's every year for mm-hmm. shivaratri for many years now mm-hmm. and i go all, maybe 13 14 temples mm-hmm. in the span of 4 days all so that, three yeah. performances a night <laughs> and then three performances four performances mm-hmm. three performances four and i'll be dead but you'll dance for 40 minutes drive for half an hour dance for 45 minutes drive <laughs> dance for an hour drive yeah so you're just dead on all the stone stages carpet oh, yeah. everything like <laughs> it's just dying but so amazing yeah the dance is dream <laughs> it's amazing i mean i can't even say how mm. amazing it is when i think of tanjore my i have goosebumps see i'm just like it's so nice i don't even know what it is about it you know it's just the energy the vibe it's the it's, it's the space there like literally thousands of people mm. and that gopuram and then that heat there's always a breeze i don't even know how okay. <laughs> it's always like i go on stage and the breeze will blow like wow oh, shiva <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's just it's, it's nice. just uh, it's it's nice okay, so i i asked your friends of mine will you come and uh, i want to make a coffee table book so that's how the whole thing started right with them coming with me and uh, anu who is a photographer from Bangalore and Vivian also mm-hmm. so they both came and they took photographs of this journey mm-hmm. uh, that was there obviously they could take only photographs of me on stage because there are lots of rights yeah. issues with dancers on stage if they're sitting you can take yeah. but when they're performing you can't just mm-hmm. take a i don't know they i feel like 
you can't. Like I wouldn't want someone to take a picture of me performing and just put yeah. it in their book, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So oh. if I'm sitting down outside, you're in public space technically, according mm -hmm. to photographers and all that, and they can. So it, it's okay. So it's <laughs> okay. Kind of okay. Yeah, but that's yeah. how it works, I think, in most right. places. I, I honestly, I have no idea, but mm -hmm. this was a photographer's thing, right. not my okay. photo. So they have a lot of pictures of me performing, of people, of dancers sitting around, the audience, the thing, mm -hmm. the temples, everything. Okay. So it's a beautiful photo journey mm -hmm. of this whole experience and mm -hmm. travel. And, and many places, I, I used to dance. In Chidambaram, it's practice to dance outside. Yeah. Uh, in another temple, instead of the stage, I said, Sir, can, you, can I please dance inside the temple? Don't. Mm -hmm. I don't need all this, just give mm -hmm. me two speakers. Mm -hmm. So I danced inside the temple. Amazing. So yeah. in, in each place it was a little bit different. Some mm -hmm. were on stages, some mm -hmm. was in the thing. So we made a coffee table book and I started writing mm -hmm. and it was a pandemic. So I wrote and I wrote and I wrote mm -hmm. and it became another book. Wow. So okay. Discovering Devi has excerpts of Finding mm -hmm. Shiva and Finding Shiva has a separate book on its own. Mm -hmm. But it's more about the journey of dance, how I understood Bharatanatyam when I was a child, mm -hmm. how my relationship to it changed, mm -hmm. how my perception of what Nataraja was changed, how I began to understand what it is that Satvikam Shivam, when you say what mm -hmm. does it mean? Yeah. And um, I think I started, re I, I mean, I've always been exposed to Vedanta and uh, Advaita. Mm -hmm. so, I think it started coming together mm -hmm. in a more uh, clear way right. for me, not just in my personal life, but in also from a performative experience, mm -hmm. how for that moment in performance, you, you let go of yourself right. completely. And I always feel like that, like after it's done, everyone's clapping and then I'm here, I'm standing here and I'm they're clapping for me, but I'm not the one who danced. Yeah, the dance that was there, it's, it's not there at that moment, right? The dance very, is, yeah. The dance, I did, me, Rukmini didn't exist in the dance, yeah. which is why the dance yeah. was. Mm -hmm. Now I'm standing here and you're clapping and you're saying amazing show. And I'm like, thank you so much, but am I allowed to take this thanks? Yeah. No, because, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I'm here now, I'm yeah. Rukmini, I'm conscious of my, my yeah, being this is and my thing, this is yeah. me and I'm I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm a dancer, I'm a choreographer, I have Radha Kalpa dance club. I'm very aware yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know all these things, my identity is yeah. clear, yeah. but I had no identity to this when I was mm -hmm. dancing and they're clapping for me when I was in this. So mm -hmm. how, is it okay? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? How do you tell that? Yeah. 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 So I think it came from that mm -hmm. and how I thought about it or what it meant even mm -hmm. philosophically speaking or how do you get to that place where you forget about everything and just dance am I aware of the music am I not right. is the music a part of the dance like a lot of questions a lot of thoughts mm -hmm. and it was a pandemic so I would wake up at 4 a.m. every day and just keep writing I think that's one of the best things about writing is that it grounds you so much, right? Yeah. As opposed to dance where you it just makes you forget your own body. But with writing, it's the opposite. It kind of like solidifies you. If I don't know. I feel like it's the same in both. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time when I'm writing, especially the poetry, I don't... Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I've written later. It's the same as when I'm dancing. Right. So I'll write everything and then I look back and I'm like, oh, did I write that? Oh, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I do feel like both are the same in that way. Mm -hmm. But obviously with dance, I, I speak easier. Mm -hmm. With writing, I'm a novice. So mm -hmm. my mind is still present sometimes. Right. With poetry, I'm not so much. Mm -hmm because words flow easier, but yeah. with prose, I do have to think. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like 15 years back when I used mm -hmm. to think of my whatever, that's me with writing. With writing right now, absolutely, yeah. I get that, yeah. With dance, I don't need to think anymore. It's, it's gone beyond. It's like that. my, it's like my being. It's like a nature, yeah. It's like my being. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why, I think a few months ago someone asked me something and since then I, I started saying this. 
I was like, I think I speak Bharatanatyam better than English. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and it's true because with English, when I write, I have to think, mm, is there a capital? Is there, was there a comma? Right. I just have, no, I think that's, that phrase is incomplete. Then, oh, I have to put a that. Oh, I have to put, oh no, that stage is like fragmented. I have to read. I have to think about all these things yeah. when I write English. With dance, no, nothing's mm. fragmented. Everything's fine. <laughs> It's all a free flow. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I really look forward to reading your book. For any of you who are interested, I'll be linking it down in the description box below. Rukmini, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you. Lovely to talk to you. Thank Charlie. you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you all. Namaste to all of you. Thank you.